Right, let's talk about Gareth Southgate and him leaving as England manager because he has just officially stepped down as England manager. And obviously a decision that we expected and have probably been anticipating for a couple of days now. But let's talk about the fallout of this, right? And what Gareth Southgate actually brought to the job. Gareth Southgate has had a real change in the way that people see him over the last, what, eight years that he's kind of resided over this England job. And I think he's a very... Um, I think because of the press, he's a very conflicted character. But I think the way that he's left, what he's done for England and what he has shown us in this time is very, very important. And it's something that should be heeded for future England managers. First of all, and off the bat, I think I should say, I think we need to stop hounding England managers and let them do their job. We are a clickbait, a headline chasing, a controversy, ridden country that is split so much that we can't decide what we want exactly. Now, obviously, no England manager is going to democratically be elected as, you know, the only, the only England manager we can have because we don't do an election in that way. We should do an election in a way that's genius. But we don't do that right now, right? And the point is with Gareth Southgate that Gareth Southgate deserved better from us. From day one, people were questioning him. From day one, people questioned his character. Even I was part of some of those groups and I'm human in the way that I have swings of some of the, my opinions sometimes. I tried not to do that so much anymore, but back in the day when he was first was England manager, of course I was on the kickoff, there were a lot more opinions flying around. Slightly younger, but then that's not really an excuse for the way that you talk about people. You get my point though. There are a lot of opinions expressed on that show, not only by me, I think there are a lot of other people. And a lot of people vilified him. A lot of people made him this character that England shouldn't respect rather than wouldn't, and obviously they wouldn't respect. A lot of people chased him out of this job. A lot of people constantly hounded this guy because, what, he didn't represent what they thought England manager should be? Someone who doesn't even exist at the moment? Like, the next England manager is going to be looking at what Gareth Southgate went through and say to himself, do I really want that? Do I really want what Gareth went through? Or could I do better than a lot of what Gareth did? Gareth has laid a foundation for whoever comes in. He is a man who deserves respect for what he has shown England. And what I will tell you is shown England. First of all, we should have respected our players better throughout the era that he existed as England manager. We should have re respected them better in the era after that as well, and maybe they would have done better. These people are human. They deserve respect. They are representing their country. And though they are all millionaires, though they are all very often pampered, though they do request ridiculous things like Wayne Rooney talking about the foot massage that Lampard and Terry would get during their time in England camps and those kind of things. There are also people within those teams who care a lot about England. Gareth Southgate spoke from the heart about being someone who wanted to be loved. If we're a country who can be so invested in wanting to win, but not give the emotional and, uh, I guess, like national support that we know we need to give to get there. And we just kind of have this entitled nature that I think a lot of people reference in my comments in the days after, then it's a problem. And the reason, part of the reason that Gareth has stepped down is I think he's realized he's taken this England team as far as they can. They have reached the end of the life cycle under Gareth. Very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for the memories he's given us in that time. But I think a real issue with the way that the English treat their managers is that sometimes we'll undermine them in a moment where we don't have an alternative. There have been calls during this tournament for Gareth Southgate to step down. What are we going to do mid-tournament if Gareth Southgate steps down? Are the players going to self-manage? Is it going to be Steve Holland that steps up? Because guess what? It was Steve Holland who made a lot of those decisions in the first place and Southgate was just the face of them. So what are you saying? Like that it's just going to shift from one person to another? Genius. On top of that, and I think the frustration comes now, we know that there is still a system that is growing within the FA now of developing youth. We are still coming up with ideas which will do as well as Spain and Italy and Germany and France and all those places because we didn't have a lot of that infrastructure. We're still waiting for the fruits of our labour in those areas. Gareth Southgate had a lot of talented players, but he didn't have a lot of talented players who've all been schooled in very similar ways. He had a lot of talented players who've come from very different managers. Pep, Klopp, Arteta... Uh, you know, I mean, even Villa, all those kind of guys, it's probably better to have players who play in systems where it isn't quite as ideological because you can just make them into more of what you want because they're more coachable in the way that you would want them to be coachable. And guess what? They're probably slightly less exhausted. Having said that, obviously two of the most significant players in this tournament have been 
Saka and Declan Rice. Two players who split opinion. I personally think Saka is incredible. I also think Declan Rice is incredible. But he is coming for a lot of criticism over the last few days. We need a manager who is going to be able to ride that criticism, who's going to be able to get through that criticism, and is going to be able to deflect in the same way as Gareth Southgate did. Now, I'll tell you a story. I, I met Gareth Southgate once when filming a documentary. We were meant to get 10, 15 minutes with him, and actually we got an hour with him because he wanted to sit down, I mean, as far as I assume, he wanted to sit down and speak to us. He was very intelligent in that time. He was very giving. He was a man who wanted to speak to us, discuss ideas, tell us what was so good about Jordan Henderson, about Harry Kane, about all the leaders, the different qualities, about treating players as humans, about the ideology that was behind England. Not about some political ideology, though very often he got embroiled in those things, and I think the press wanted him to. We need to talk about the press at some point. But he spoke from the heart about what it was that he cared about for England, and he clearly cared about England. I think to an extent we've become disconnected from what England actually represents globally, but also what it represents to us, because we have been sold this idea that we can have everything because we invented everything. We are so entitled as a country to first of all winning, but also to whatever it is that we want. And I think we've grown away from what a lot of people like to reference to that wartime mentality, which is more about being pragmatic, which is more about make do and mend, which is more about doing the things that are needed rather than the things that we feel entitled to. Yes, I'm not talking about some Winston Churchill mentality here. I'm talking about very simple things that in the past, England thought it represented. Whether that's true or not, by the way, is a whole other thing. But what it thought it represented, giving people Healthcare, giving people a right to hear the news, giving people a right to a voice in this country, whether those things are real or not is a whole other thing. Whether they were just a dream is another thing. But Gareth Southgate reminded us that treating the people as humans makes a big difference. Something that we've forgotten in this era and that to an extent he got shouted down for reminding us of. Bring in another manager who treats us as humans and the players as humans. Don't treat Southgate as this blight that we've finally gotten rid of because guess what you will miss him if if and when we replace him as England manager with someone who doesn't continue somewhat of that legacy the legacy is not to just continue what Southgate did and just go out there and go cool Southgate 2.0 the legacy is to go we learn that these people are humans we learn that they deserve respect we learned that if we apply some tactics within that time we get rid of Kane or move Kane into a more respected position, we move on someone like Kyle Walker in the same way as we've moved on Henderson, and we bring in some people who can fill those positions which we know we have within the squad, then this team is highly capable of reaching a final. And they're very capable of playing better football. We saw that within the windows that Southgate and his team managed to get them to click, and we know that that is replicable. Bring in a manager who can do that. Clearly, there will be another candidate because I think we would have asked Southgate to stay on. I think we would have asked him to continue his job if we didn't think there was someone else in the frame. And I think we should take our time with moving on towards England winning or doing well at World Cup 2026 in the States. Don't make the same mistakes we've made in the past. Don't make this into, right, let's just find another guy that we can shoot at and see what happens. Because we've ruined Southgate and another team I get it. There are things that he made mistakes on. Tactically, he wasn't always perfect. Sometimes he said things that politically didn't fit some of the ideologies of the Reform Party. Sometimes it wasn't quite right, but they're going to misstep because guess what? Football is about taking risks and tactics. And as England fans, we've lost the idea of a journey. We've gotten in love with this idea of this corporate idea of what it is that England are meant to be. And we, I watched the video the other day of... The England, come on England, like, you know, it was the streets music. It didn't encapsulate any of what I feel as an England fan. It just gave me a load of cliches. It made me want the next manager to be Jurgen Klopp. It made me want to have a manager who can just turn around and go, you know what? <laughs> you guys, you think you know what you are, but you are just all sharing in a big lie. Part of the lie was that Gareth Southgate had to go along with that lie. But a huge part of it was that we just weren't willing to take a good look at ourselves as England fans. Whether that is actually on the next manager, I think is another thing. 
And maybe, just maybe, we need to take a good look at the fact that we would have swept a lot of this under the carpet if England had won this tournament. And maybe just tossed ourselves off into the next tournament thinking that we were on the right track. Which, by the way, I don't think it's as broken as people say. And I also think that we're about to reap the benefits of some of the academy work that we are doing, some of the grass work, work, grassroots work that we are doing, and some of the work that Southgate has very diligently done over the last decade to lay the foundations and to get England into a place where it's sort of... Do you know what I mean? Maybe it was a little bit political, what I just said. If you don't agree, that's fine. Leave a comment down below. But don't abuse me. It's just dumb. So much abuse online. We get, I got so much abuse just for talking about Gareth Southgate the other day. And I know that wasn't aimed at me. It was just aimed at, like, you know, the general anger. But some of the things that people said were just rude. And imagine if I was Southgate. That would be a hundred times worse. Tenfold. Billion times worse. I feel sorry for him. I enjoyed the chat that I had with him. I enjoyed the time that he's been England manager. It wasn't always like, you know, sunshine and rainbows. I think we've suffered in a lot of this time. But we've reached a couple of finals. We've reminded ourselves that's possible. And he leaves that legacy behind of some of the things that I think we've lost as England. He regained some of those identities in a very gentle, kind, and um, sometimes more understanding than we deserved as a family. He was better than we deserved in terms of how he treated us. Anyway, on to the next one. Video coming at four o'clock about Jurgen Klopp and why he should or shouldn't be England manager. See you then.